afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the NACTA webinar series. Today, we have one of our Alaskan suppliers on. I'm very excited for this introduction and this presentation because for those of you who are coming to the NACTA conference, which just in case you didn't remember, is going to be held in Anchorage at um, from September 13th to 16th. You will have the opportunity to meet this fine woman. And for those of you who have signed up for the post three night trip, this is the line you are going to be on and you are going to have the world's best experience. And for those of you who are on the call who may still have some wiggle room in your schedule, and you're going to go to the NACTA conference in Anchorage, and you're like, you know, I really want to do this, sign up, please. There's a couple of rooms left, a couple of cabins. It's a lot of fun. It's going to allow you the opportunity to sell Alaska Dream Cruises, this phenomenal small ship company. And I am a little bit of housekeeping because that's what I'm here for. It's, I'm really the magic wizard in the background. I have nothing to do with this except for turning on the buttons and introducing the speaker. We are going to be recording this, so you're all on mute because we don't need squeaking chairs and water and keyboards in the background. I'm going to be introducing Michelle Glass. She is the director of uh, Vice Director. Are you the vice, or vice president, there we go, of sales for Alaskan Dream Cruises. She has supported NACTA for many, many, many years. She will also be down at the ASTA conference in San Diego in August. So you have two opportunities to be able to meet her and find out about this amazing product. And so now I am going to turn the reins over to Michelle uh, to introduce her and her fine product. And Michelle, if I recall, are, are we going to have a little drawing at the very end of the webinar? So that way we make sure everybody pays attention and they can have something at the end. Yes, absolutely. We are going to have uh, a, a drawing for a $25 Visa gift card so you can, you know, Take your friends out to coffee and dream of Alaska. Um, and, uh, you know, there'll be a, a question at the end. So you'll just need to make sure you pay attention to everything I say. <laughs> well, there you go. So, Michelle, I am going to put myself on mute. So that way we have a nice, clear recording. Uh, so you don't hear my squeaky chair or every once in a while, because everybody who knows me knows I live in Windsor, and right over my house goes the Horizon uh, airplane that takes people to uh, up to Seattle, and which I send many of my clients on. So occasionally a flight will go over, but I always go, ooh, some of my happy clients heading off to Alaska. So that's the other reason I turn this off. So. Here you go. I will turn the reins over. Just let me know when you're ready. Uh, this is being recorded, everybody, so I will send out the record link to you uh, in the next day or two, so that way you, too, can show this to your clients, because you're going to want to be able to get your clients excited to be able to sell this cruise line and small ship Alaska trip. So here you go, Michelle. I'm putting myself on mute. Okay, well, great. And um, thank you, Lorraine, so much for um, getting this organized and for uh, taking control of the technology because uh, I would not want that responsibility. And uh, I just want to say thank you uh, to our NACTA uh, agents out there. We're very excited to be um, and proud to be NACTA and now ASTA partners. So um, I do look forward to spending the next time with you telling you about our product and about small ship cruising in Alaska. Um, and just a little bit of a background on me so you know my perspective. I have been in the Alaska travel industry for 25 years. I went up uh, one summer after I graduated from college for one summer only, and that was in 1992. So uh, you can see what Alaska will do to you. One summer only turns into, you know, 25 years of 
uh, working in the industry and living in Alaska. I lived in um, Valdez, Alaska, Skagway, Alaska, Haines, Alaska, and out on the Kenai Peninsula in Soldotna. And I've had the great fortune of being um, the Condé Nast Travel Magazine Alaska Specialist. So I've seen um, virtually the entire state, every region, uh, a lot of properties, a lot of hotels, tours. Um, I consider this all to be a, a great blessing in my career. And I'm super excited to be with Alaska Dream Cruises. I've been with them um, almost two years now, but I have been selling the product since 2013 when I myself uh, went on Alaska Dream Cruises Spam Tour. Um, so I was an avid um, enthusiast of selling the product even before I worked uh, for the company. So that's kind of the perspective I come from. And uh, again, at the end of the presentation, you know, feel free to ask me questions about the product or other ideas um, you know, questions that you might have about um, traveling in Alaska. I have uh, a lot of opinions for sure. <laughs> and um, you'll see here on our first slide, Alaskan Dream Cruises. This is our tagline, True Alaska with True Alaskan. And I will talk more about that um, in just a bit. But True Alaska with True Alaskan is so fitting for our company because we are the only cruise line owned and operated by Alaskans. So big or small, medium size, there is no other Alaska owned cruise line. And we're very proud of the fact that uh, we are true Alaskans owned and operated by a family out of Sitka, Alaska. And uh, it really motivates everything that we do. So I think, you know, when you talk about unique selling points, this is our most unique, we are true Alaskans. Um, I'm going to move in a little bit of a different direction right now, not so much about our company, but more so about um, small ship cruising, because I did uh, kind of lure you in with some ideas of small ship cruising is a different experience than the big ships. And I started out my Alaska career uh, working for Holland America, and I'm so thankful for that opportunity because uh, had it not been for me uh, not paying attention to the job interview, I thought I was working for Holland America in the Caribbean, but I ended up working for Holland America in Alaska. Uh, I probably would have never gone to Alaska. And as I said, it's really shaped my life. But, you know, there are big differences between small ship cruising and big ship cruising. Um, and it's all perspective. Now, this is a classic image that some of you may remember um, back uh, in the day when Cruise West uh, was the leader in small ship travel in Alaska. Uh, Cruise West, uh, as some of you know, went out of business in 2009, unfortunately. Um, and that was a sad day uh, when they closed shop, but uh, they used to use this kind of perspective like us versus them or just a, you know, take a look at the difference in size. Uh, again, this is the Sapphire Princess, 2,600 plus guests or the Cruise West vessel. I can't tell which one this is, but um, it has around 54. And I know that because this Cruise West vessel is our vessel now. Uh, when Cruise West went out of business, Alaskan, uh, the Allen family who owned Allen Marine Tours, um, they were operating day boats. Um, they saw that there was now a hole in the market for a locally owned Alaska small ship company. So they acquired three uh, Cruise West vessels and uh, we refurbished them and they're now in our fleet. But so whether this was a Cruise West or an Alaska Dream Cruises or a Lindblad ship or an Uncruise ship, there is a, a big difference when you're traveling to uh, Alaska um, in, in size and perspective. And, you know, one of my favorite things is everyone wants to see a puffin. Um, and puffins are about the size of a duck. And so when you think about, you, you've dreamed, you've always wanted to see a puffin, and you're standing there on the 17th floor looking down, it's pretty difficult to see a duck <laughs> and, or a puffin. And uh, as opposed to the smaller ship, which you see here, um, you know, you're 
just going to have a, a lot more um, visual and, and physical connection with your surroundings when you're in a smaller environment. Um, back in the day when I used to plan Alaska trips and help people decide what they wanted to do, um, you know, we would talk about what are your primary motivators? Like, why do you want to go to Alaska? And I know a lot of you are probably seasoned cruise sellers, um, probably been to Alaska yourself, been on big ships around the world, been on small ships. But um, I always think that, you know, in talking to people and finding out why they want to travel, what their expectations are, what, what their dreams are, it really helps to make their decisions. And the, the one thing that I say, if someone has dreamed of going to Alaska their whole life, dreamed of cruising in Alaska, Red Jack London, uh, you know, totally into Caldwell, all of that dreaming of Alaska, watch the 17 different shows about Alaska on television. I really think that small ship is the best way to go. Um, and you'll see for reasons we talk about later, just the experience, the connectivity, uh, the, the real um, connection with Alaska that you get on a small ship just can't be um, achieved on a big ship in, in my estimation. And again, I would never uh, disparage uh, the big ship experience. Uh, as my friend in the hotel business says, there's uh, a butt for every bed and a bed for every butt. And so, you know, for some people, big ships are the way to go. Um, you know, when you look at price, if price is their primary decision factor, then probably Big Ship is going to be the best choice for them. Uh, I was at uh, an event last year and a woman came up to me and she said, well, you know, how, how do you compare with Princess? And I, I said, well, uh, you know, I started talking about, you know, ways we were similar and ways we were different. And she said, oh, well, you know, that's that all sounds great. And um, so you're probably less expensive than a princess ship because your ships are smaller. And I had to explain to her that no, it was pretty difficult to uh, compete with uh, the economy of scale when you've got a big ship and so many people on it versus a small ship of only 40 to you know 70 people on it. So, you know, if, if price is their primary decision factor, then probably a big ship is a great introduction to Alaska. And then if they fall in love with it and want to see more, then a lot of times people will come back and do a small ship uh, adventure. Uh, if you want to engage with nature, um, then a small ship is probably the best bet for you. Uh, same with interacting with local and native culture, small ship, and in particular, Alaska Dream Cruises for native culture. Um, again, we'll talk about it later, but we are the, the leader in um, connecting with um, the local and native people in native villages. Um, and uh, again, something that uh, you would find more on a small ship than a big ship. If you're looking for well-appointed rooms with luxurious amenities, marble bathrooms, you know, state rooms in the, you know, three, four, five hundred square foot range, um, you know, spas, massage therapy, then definitely you're going to be looking for a big ship. And for some people that's super important to them and that's great because everyone needs to be happy on their vacation. For some people, they couldn't care less about it and then great, we'll put them on a, a small ship. But for people who are really looking for um, that level of luxury, then being on a, a big ship is probably a, a good idea. And the, the great news is there's a lot of um, new, smaller big ships coming into the market that have that uh, small ship feel, but still big ship uh, luxury. So that's the exciting thing with uh, Windstar and Azamara coming in, Silver Sea. Um, so there, there is a happy medium. If you're looking for big show entertainment options, gambling, art auctions, climbing walls, um, then Big Ship is going to be, uh, you know, the choice. Obviously, uh, we don't uh, have room for a climbing wall, <laughs> or um, we don't opt to make uh, uh, a massage therapy uh, an option as well for different reasons. But again, for people who are interested in that, then the good news is there's lots of big ships to choose from. For people who are looking for education and enrichment about 
the people, the place, the geography, the land, uh, the animals. A lot of times that is, um, you know, most accessible on a small ship where you have your onboard uh, naturalist, expedition leaders, um, botanists, biologists, geologists uh, who are coming on the small ships to educate you about the area around you. And then a value for dollar spent. That is, uh, you know, value is one of those subjective terms. It could, for some people, it could be a big ship or a small ship, and that's where you come into play. A good agent who knows their product is always uh, the best person to advise. I know that, um, I, you know, I've worked uh, in the agent world myself. I've worked with travel agents for 25 years, and uh, there is nothing like a good travel professional to help someone make the decisions because there's a lot of options out there. And every day there are more options in Alaska and every day it gets more confusing. So again, thank you for your time to learn about our product. Um, and you know, I hope that this helps you help your clients. Um, you know, I used to live in the town of Skagway and uh, this is kind of a typical, this is a picture taken from a local hiking trail. Um, and this is kind of what you see when you're in port. And again, Skagway is a town of about 950 people. And quite often, you'll have over 10,000 people in town. Um, this is our port call. This is our own private day lodge called Orca Point Lodge. And you can see there are very few people there. So again, just a little bit of perspective about what we do. We are a uh, small ship adventure in the Inside Passage. We sail exclusively in the Inside Passage. So uh, Sitka to Juneau, Sitka to Ketchikan, uh, Ketchikan to Sitka, and Juneau to Sitka, all within. So guests will fly uh, to Ketchikan, Sitka, or Juneau to embark and fly home from Ketchikan, Sitka, or Juneau um, back home, or some people will uh, fly up to Anchorage and continue on to Denali or beyond. But we do not have any vessels that are coming from Seattle North or uh, Anchorage South. We are exclusively within the Inside Passage. And one of the things that I want to talk about in the Inside Passage here, and hopefully you can see my little arrow moving, but a lot of times people will ask about small ship adventures um, in this big ocean and how does seasickness and to fact, but one of the reasons why the Inside Passage is, is named that is you can see back in here after Big Island, Big Island, Big Island, there's all these little passageways that um, our vessels sail in. So the prevailing weather comes um, mostly from this direction. So the, the waves, the ocean swell, the winds, they're all buffeted by this row of island and then this row of island and then this row of island. So a lot of times inside passage waters are very smooth. Last summer I was on uh, one of our boats and this sweet lady said to me, um, oh, what lake are we sailing on? And I had to explain that the lake was called the Pacific Ocean and that uh, it just happens that it's it's very calm back in the Inside Passage. So while I have that map, I wanted to kind of explain that. And, and again, you can ask questions later. Um, one of the things, uh, you know, in now moving on to our company and, uh, you know, what we do when we talk about being true Alaska with, by true Alaskans, um, we have a true Alaskan legacy. Um, we are owned and operated by the Allen family out of Sitka. Bob and Betty Allen. Uh, Betty is full Clinkit, so she is Alaska native. Bob is Norwegian and uh, came to Alaska looking for opportunity, met Betty, they fell in love, five kids later, um, you know, the story goes on. But they are truly pioneers of uh, Alaska boat tours. They have been in the sightseeing boat building business for 50 years. It all started when they decided to do some boat touring around Sitka. Uh, there was a sunken boat. They raised the sunken boat, cleaned it up, and started doing tours of the waters around Sitka. Moved on to building boats. Uh, they have uh, their own dry dock. They are, um, you know, boat repairmen, boat builders, uh, sailors. Um, they have over 
50 different small uh, day boats in all the ports in Southeast Alaska. So say, for example, if you've ever been on one of the big ships, uh, maybe Princess, Holland America, Norwegian, and, and gone to Juneau to do a whale watching, or maybe gone to Sitka to do some sea otters, a lot of the boats that you see, a lot of the small day operations are boats that were built by the Allen family. And then, as I mentioned, in uh, 2000, and nine, when Cruise West went out of business, uh, they acquired some vessels. They thought, well, let's just get into the overnight business. And in 2011, we started Alaskan Dream Cruises. Um, at that time, there were uh, two boats in operation. A third boat was being worked on and entered uh, the fleet in 2013. Um, so, and we've just been growing from there. And when I say here that they actively live the Alaska life, um, it's the owners, um, Bob and Betty now are advanced in years, but uh, their son, Dave Allen, his wife, his daughters, um, if they're not working, they're out fishing, they're out boating, they're out hiking. They truly love the Alaska life, and that is so reflected in our product. And again, uh, it sets us apart, I think, from a lot of other of, uh, companies in our competition. So we provide um, guests the opportunity to experience true Alaska through our unique itineraries. Uh, we have engaged exploration and moderately physical activities. Um, I say moderately, um, nothing is overly challenging. So um, if you have never kayaked before and you want to give it a try, great. If you have never kayaked before and have no interest whatsoever in trying it out, that's great as well. If you want to go for a hike or a beach walk, great. If you want to be on the boat and stay, um, that's great too. Uh, the only thing that I would say that we can't accommodate if you're the type of person or your your guest is the type of person that needs to break a sweat every day goes to the gym every day for an hour to work out um might not have as much physical activity as as um, that person is used to and again that's fine there are ways to uh you know do sit-ups in your stateroom if you want but um you know by no means are we an a uh, an strenuous physical activity kind of experience. We have uh, five vessels in our fleet, ranging from 10 passengers uh, to 74 passengers. Our smallest is here, the Misty Fjord, just 10 passengers. It is a completely different experience. It is more of an expedition style um, where we have a set itinerary when we start, but it may not be what we follow. And people love that. This is a great, a vessel for someone who is more active. Um, as you can see, we have kayaks on board, we have a stand-up paddle board, we have a little zodiac to run people around. Um, and because there are only 10 guests on the, the boat and the boat is nimble enough, um, we go to shore a lot. So for your guest who doesn't mind a small, small boat and wants the most activity, the Misty is great. Um, the Baranoff Dream and the Admiralty Dream are both former Cruise West vessels. Um, they're right around the 50 passenger range. And then our Alaska Dream down here uh, is a catamaran style, and it holds 40 passengers. It does um, some of our longer itineraries, our eight and our 10 night itinerary. And people, even though it's, it's a smaller vessel, people do love the Alaskan Dream. Uh, vote. And then our newest vessel launched last June, the Chichagoff Dream. It is about twice the size of the Admiralty or the Baranoff Dream. It is over 200 feet long and it has uh, up to 74 passengers. This is what our NACTA fam is going to be on in September. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful vessel. Um, this is a great vessel for someone who wants a little more room, maybe someone who's a taller person because there's tons of headroom, someone who wants a proper bathroom because the bathrooms on the Chichagoff Dream um, have a separate standalone shower and a separate toilet as opposed to some of the combination, uh, they call them shoilets on the smaller vessels, which is pretty standard for expedition boating um, where you're your head or your your bathroom is all one compartment. Um, so the Chichagoff 
uh, dream. It's just a little bit larger, a little bit um, uh, more uh, spacious, and a little more um, well appointed. We have five different itineraries, and I won't spend a lot of time uh, going through these day by day because you can certainly check them out online or on our website. Um, our most popular is our Alaska Glacier uh, Bay and Island Adventure. It is um, seven nights. It fits really well with if you want to uh, do an Alaska land tour before or after. Um, it's on the Admiralty Dream or the Chichagoff Dream. Uh, it, it goes from a Friday to a Friday or a Sunday to a Sunday between Sick and Juno. Uh, we have one of these offerings almost every week of the entire summer. And it's just a little bit of everything. Uh, it has Glacier Bay. It has uh, small ports like Petersburg. It has a native village such as Cake. Um, and it has lots of wilderness uh, experiences as well. So it's just a great overview for someone who um, has maybe never been to Alaska um, and wants to do the small ship experience. Uh, our next most popular itinerary is Alaska's Inside Passage Sojourn. This is done on the Alaska Dream. This itinerary is probably um, the first to sell out uh, every season because we have uh, the fewest of these. Uh, it goes between Ketchikan and Sitka, and for someone who is really interested in Native culture, this is a great choice for them. Um, we stop in uh, Ketchikan, um, Metlakatla, Kassan, and Wrangell, and these all have uh, a very strong uh, Native culture about them. And places like Kassan or Metlakatla are places that even as an Alaskan, you never see. So it is, it is a real treat to go to these very, very small Native communities um, where you're treated like family, of course, because most often you are family. If you're a part of Alaskan Dream Cruises, you're part of the Allen family, and uh, they have friends and family in, in places all around Southeast Alaska. So it's always a warm welcome. But again, eight nights, uh, eight and uh, nine nights, so eight days, um, let's try, nine days, eight nights, <laughs> and um, it is really uh, great for someone who perhaps has been to Alaska before on a big ship and wants to see more of it, or someone who is interested in uh, the culture. Our Alaska Southeast Explorer is 10 uh, nights and goes uh, between Ketchikan and Sitka, but also includes stops in Skagway and Haynes. Uh, again, Skagway is, uh, you know, a very popular uh, stop for the big ships, but the gold rush history can't be beat. The White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad is included in our itinerary. Again, I should mention all of your activities are included. So there's no need to purchase any additional activities in these ports. When we go to Skagway, we're including the train. When we go to Juneau, we're going to take you to Mendenhall Glacier and give you a tour. When we go to Petersburg, we're going to include a dance show and a hike, or maybe two hikes if you're really active. Um, this is a new itinerary for 2018. It's our Alaska's uh, Frontiers and Wilderness Quest. It's on the Chichibok Dream. So for people who want a longer itinerary, but want maybe a little bit more boats than uh, the Alaskan Dream, which is the 40 passengers. The Chichikov Dream, which is a larger vessel, will be doing its own 10-night itinerary as well. And then um, our smallest vessel, uh, the smallest boat, the Misty Fjord I was telling you about, has its own itinerary. Um, this is just a sample. Like I said, it's, um, you know, it gets, it gets changed around based on the wildlife, the weather, the winds of the captain, the interests of the people aboard. So it really is a grand adventure for someone who is looking for some in-depth Alaska. It does not go um, to many inhabited places. It is mostly a place, uh, an itinerary that has you out uh, in nature, whether it's hot springs or glaciers or um, you know hovercraft. Um, boat rides, kayaking, it is a wonderful active uh, adventure. So uh, like um, all ships, um, we travel throughout the region's uh, places looking for wildlife. Everyone wants to see wildlife. 
And I would say um, every sailing, uh, it would be highly unusual not to see bears. Um, this last travel, um, last cruise I was on, we saw a brown bear with cubs and black bear with cubs in two different locations. Uh, we even saw wolf in Glacier Bay. Uh, there's been a pair, uh, a pair of native wolves who've been kind of showing up on the beaches for the last month or so in Glacier Bay. Um, often see um, mountain goats, eagles, of course, and uh, then the aquatic wildlife, seals, sea lions, sea otters, whales of all different types. Um, you know, and the, the great thing is, again, on a small ship, you are right there. You are smelling the breath of the humpback whale when it exhales. You are hearing the chattering of the sea otters as they're telling you you're getting a little too close. <laughs> um, you can hear the sploosh of the um, seals as they jump off the ice into the water. So uh, it, again, it's all perspective um, and smaller vessels mean closer to the wildlife. Uh, we spend a lot of time in um, uninhabited places, remote wilderness bays. Um, this is uh, this is a very typical image of just cruising along the water and seeing the beautiful scenery, it's just the unending, untouched scenery of Southeast Alaska. We uh, on every sailing uh, we have two different glacier experiences. Uh, one will explore the uh, glacial fjords in Tracy Arm, uh, either going up to Sawyer Glacier in Tracy Arm or down in Endicott Arm. Uh, depends on how much ice is coming off either one of these glaciers, um, but we'll spend a full day in there. And this is uh, one of the places where you don't see a lot of big ships. Um, maybe one or two will call in every day, but the last three times I've been into Tracy Arm, I have not seen a big ship at all, which is always lovely to have the glaciers right in front of you where you can kind of get up close uh, with the icebergs and the wildlife. These are our, um, uh, they're called DIBs, uh, which stands for Demery Inflatable Boat. It's basically a Zodiac, but Zodiac is a brand name. So it's like Zodiacs are Cokes and Dibs are Pepsi and we just happen to have Pepsi. I wish we had Zodiacs because it would be easier to say than Dibs. But these are our Dibs and they are inflatable pontoons. You can see they have um, a railing for your back to sit in. They have a rigid solid bottom of diamond plate. So they're very, very easy to get in and out of. Um, it, it's not awkward to step in the inflatable at all. And often in Tracy Arm, uh, we will get in the dibs and go exploring, getting right up to icebergs, getting you know as close to the seals as they'll allow us to get, um, or sea otters or anything else that uh, might come our way. It's a great way to um, get into the nature. We also stop in Glacier Bay on every single one of our sailings. And on some of our, uh, well, on all of our sailings, we will stop in Bartlett Cove to pick up a cultural heritage guide um, who's from uh, the Huna uh, people, uh, in uh, the, the people who inhabited Bartlett Cove originally. And then we'll also pick up a national uh, park ranger. So we have both of them who will do the interpreting uh, throughout the park the whole time and super engaging, super warm, really enthusiastic, uh, uh, definitely a highlight to have them on board. On our sailings, we will go uh, through three distinct native cultures. Uh, we'll visit the Clinket people in Cake, uh, the Haida people in Kasan, and the Simshian people in Metlakatla. Again, as I mentioned, um, our owner Betty Allen is full Clinket. So when we started this company, it was very important for her to show uh, her culture and show her people and show why um, the land um, and the people were shaped the way, you know, the abundance of food, the beauty, the culture, the dance. And so we make this a real focus of all of our sailings with a stop in a native village on every sailing. Um, we also have cultural interpreters on board. Um, we will stop for dance shows in places like Metlakatla, which has to be one of um, the best 
native dance performances I've ever seen. Um, we'll also stop in small coastal towns that the big ships uh, don't really call in because there's just not enough infrastructure to uh, support them. So we'll go to small coastal places like Thorn Bay or Petersburg. Uh, in Petersburg, we'll go to the Sons of Norway Hall you see behind us, and we'll include a dance presentation. We'll go to Skagway, which is a small town, um, but uh, can be quite crowded. So what we try and do is that we will schedule ourselves to be in Skagway on a Saturday or a Sunday where there are the least amount of ships in port. So we really get a, a good uh, feeling for the town itself. Of course, uh, we embark or disembark in Juneau. Everyone wants to see the state capital, um, go to Mendenhall Glacier. Again, we include tours of Juneau and Mendenhall Glacier as part of uh, your embarkation there um, or as part of uh, a day port call. We don't dock downtown where you can see the ships here. We actually dock all the way out here, our own private dock, which is nice. So you're not caught up in the hustle and bustle of the town, but you do still get to see it. And one of the highlights on every sailing is Orca Point Lodge. Orca Point Lodge is our own private island. Uh, it's a day lodge. During the day, it's used by big cruise ship passengers to come out for lunch. But in the evening, we get the place to ourselves where we have a beautiful uh, dinner uh, of fresh grilled salmon, all you can eat king crab, you can do beach combing with stunning views. Um, there's a touch tank for kids and adults alike. Um, and again, uh, just dining with a view. If you like king crab, you will not be disappointed. It, it's to the point, it, it's ridiculous how much crab one can be offered. And it's just, um, you know, it, they walk around with big buckets of crab encouraging you to take more. But again, if people don't like crab, we have prime rib, we have fresh grilled salmon where the uh, chef will be filleting it for you and giving you a demonstration. It's really just a great evening. And then we'll have a bonfire on the beach. We'll make s'mores. Um, people will just sit around and talk. You can see in the background some people, uh, you see in the background the ship there, some people who might not want to stay up late um, having a s'more and talking story will go to uh, retire to the boat. They can just walk down the dock to get there. And, uh, a lot of times people will uh, just spend all night acting like a kid. Uh, last year, it was one of, I think, one of my favorite days. We got to Orca Point Lodge. The captain and his first mate and his uh, deckhands were really into baseball. So they got their baseball mitts out and baseball, and they were on the lawn playing catch with the guests. So there's a bunch of people throwing baseballs around. A bunch of people down on the beach skipping rocks. And uh, then going beach combing, you know, taking shells and, and rocks and putting them in their pockets. And then uh, up at the fire, people were making s'mores. And you could see every now and again, someone would take a candy bar and clip it in their pocket for later. And it was just the way summer should be spent and the way that real Alaskans um, will spend their summer nights just on the beach having a bonfire with their friends. Um, our life aboard, uh, as we mentioned, we have expedition craft, we have our dibs, we have our kayaks, uh, moderate activity. Uh, for those people, again, who are interested in kayaking, we have um, on every itinerary, you can go at least once. Uh, some itineraries, you can get out two or three times, depending on the conditions and the itinerary. If you've never been kayaking before and you're a little nervous, we have these custom-built kayak launchers uh, where you see you stand on the dock, you get in your kayak, and then the uh, deckhand will just roll you down the dock on the rollers and ease you into the water, and you paddle around, you come back, and they'll pull you back in. So it's, it's not awkward at all. It's very stable, and a lot of people will comment about how you know, if they had not had that ease of getting into the water, they probably wouldn't have tried kayaking, but they were so glad they did. Um, we talked a little bit about the Demery inflatable, the dibs. Again, it's excellent for wildlife viewing. We'll get out on the dibs two or three times during the course of the seven night cruise. And again, more opportunity the longer you're cruising. We'll go ashore for uh, light hikes and, and beach walks. A lot of times we'll go again to uninhabited places where we'll have to get special forest service permits. Um, sometimes 
like this is in Petersburg, you'll be walking along a well-maintained trail. Um, and again, if this is something that's challenging for your guests, they don't certainly don't have to go. Um, the expedition leaders will always be there to advise and to assist. Um, on a lot of our sailings, we'll get two permits to go into Glacier Bay. Um, so we'll get to spend two days there, which will allow us to get onshore for more activities. Um, you can see one of our uh, expedition leaders here talking just about the movement of glaciers. And, and you can see right there icebergs on the beach that you can go up and touch. And it's a great sailing. If you do have someone who's particularly interested in Glacier Bay, make sure you ask our reservation specialists which sailings have the two days in Glacier Bay, and they can let you know. Um, our life aboard, again, it's, it's well appointed. All your meals are included. All your activities are included. We include a glass of wine or a beer uh, with your meal at dinner time. And then if you want to have additional wine or pre-dinner cocktails, we do have a bar on board. Guests will set up an onboard account and they can just uh, settle up at the end uh, when they disembark. They can pay by credit card. They can add gratuities onto their account. There are a few um, items in our gift shop, which isn't really a gift shop, it's more of a gift nook, like a gift bookcase. But you know, people do like to get a few souvenirs. Um, it's just not a, not a focus of our cruise, but again, people do like having that. So we have a relaxed, casual atmosphere. There is no formal night. Uh, everyone is wearing jeans or you know khakis and you know puffy down coats or rain jackets. It is just very relaxed, but also, uh, you know, very refined. We have great dining we'll talk about here in a moment. We have our um, open wheelhouse, so you can come and visit with the captains at all times. Um, occasionally, they might have to close the wheelhouse if they're going through a very narrow passageway or if they're navigating through ice and they can't be distracted, but otherwise, you're always welcome to come visit with the captain. We have... Um, uh, open seating, so there's no assigned seating. Uh, dinner is generally at 6.30 every evening. We have appetizer social hour at 5.30 every evening before that. Um, and we focus on fresh Alaska cuisine. We source a lot of our products from Alaska, our fish, a lot of our spirits, um, even things like our vegetables are, are grown um, locally in Sitka, Juneau, Ketchikan. Um, again, of course, we have an emphasis on seafood because that's what Alaska is so uh, well known for. Uh, seafood is served at almost, at, well, pr practically every meal. <laughs> so there's, whether it's a smoked salmon, uh, biscuits and gravy, or a halibut burger for lunch, or shrimp for dinner, uh, you can always be guaranteed of a uh, seafood option. Here's a sample dinner menu. Um, you can see that we have uh, a seafood option, but we always have a vegetarian option and we always have a turf or terrestrial uh, land-based animal, whether it's uh, maybe a pork chop or lamb chops or this evening they had a, a venison. Um, and then you can always just get a steak or a chicken breast. Um, you know, the the crew is very accommodating. The food is very good. I think that was one of the things that really surprised me when I first went on my Alaska Dream Cruise was how good the food was. Um, and you're never underfed. So every vessel has different stateroom categories, uh, some with ocean view windows, uh, some small. I, this is a sampling of all the different ones on the Chichikov. Again, this is the boats that are next to um, cruise is going to be on. So you can see uh, a small A category which has portholes all the way to our deluxe which has big uh, picture windows. And they're all lovely and well appointed. There's lounges um, for social hour and mingling with guests on all of our vessels. Um, again, everyone looks a little bit different. This is a picture of our salt room. This is as, as uh, high tech as we get with this uh, spa amenities. Uh, a this is Himalayan salt bricks, and it's great for cleansing the lungs and respiratory. It's heated to about 80 degrees, so it's not like a spotted out sauna. Uh, people go in with their clothes on, and it's on our Chichibop. It's really a great place to hang out, especially after you've been outside in front of a cold glacier. It's nice to come warm up in here. We have 
cultural guides on every sailing. We have naturalists on every sailing. Um, and again, we'll go to places uh, with cultural enrichment specialists as well. And for children, we, um, we accept all ages of children. However, the um, only time that we have family dedicated programs are on our Become a True Alaska Family Cruise. We have three of those for 2018. We just finished 2017. Um, children 15 and under are 30% off. Um, and that's on any sailing. It's not just our family sailing, but children 15 and under are always 30% off, off the cruise fare. But on our True Alaska um, sailing, uh, we kind of tailor it for seven and up. We'll have a youth expedition leader who happens to be the Sitka Middle School science teacher. His name is Matt, and he's awesome with kids of all age. Um, so if if you do have families that are traveling together, um, you know this is a great option to uh, put them on. We again accept kids on all sailings, so it it's not unusual to have a child or two. On the sailing, I will say, however, um, under seven, it's a little difficult. Uh, you know, the parents have to be really mindful of their child and the experience on board because there just isn't that extraneous activity, and they're, um, you know, the parents have to engage with them. But that being said, I've met some wonderful five-year-olds on our boats before. Um, on their family sailing, uh, you know, the crew will teach them how to navigate. They'll get their own navigation certificate. They can join the Killer Whale Club where they jump in the water. Uh, anyone can do this if you want. I know Lorraine's planning to do it in September when we go. Um, and just wrapping up, because I know we've, we've almost exhausted our time here, but um, on our post-conference cruise, um, it'll be Sitka to Juno, September 17th to 20th. It'll be on the Chichagot Dream. As Lorraine said, there's Still some space available. Um, we'll be doing two days in Glacier Bay, uh, which is great. Uh, we'll be going to Orca Point Lodge for that lovely meal I was telling you about. And it's a great way to celebrate uh, the end of the season and educate um, with your friends and colleagues in Alaska. I think we all know the benefit of experiencing something and then selling it. So when I heard that NACTA was coming to Anchorage, I uh, contacted Anne right away and said, we have got to have a cruise afterwards because it's, you know, the end of our season, it's uh, a great time to get out on the water, maybe even see the Northern Lights, you never know, um, but really to experience it. And how better to do that than with the friends that you just went on your conference with. And then I do want to mention, uh, lastly, we do have some current promotions going on. Um, it is not too late to travel in 2017. Uh, we're offering 30% off of the standard rack rate on our late sailing, late season savings on the Chichagoff Dream and Baranoff Dream. Um, we have a single supplement waiver on eight different savings for the remainder of this season. And then um, we just extended our early booking promotion for 2018. So you can book 2018 at 2017 rates now through October 1st. And this hasn't been announced yet. It was to end August 1st, but I'm giving you guys the inside scoop that I'm going to extend it to October 1st. And then after that, early booking is over. So, um, and I'd say, you know, if you do have people interested, um, get them going now. Our, 2018 bookings are um, active. Um, one of our family cruises is almost sold out. Uh, two of our sailings on the Alaska Dream are already sold out. So people are booking in advance again. Um, so do motivate them. And that's it, Lorraine. I feel like I've just been talking and talking and talking. So I'm happy to uh, take any questions or I'm going to turn it back over to you. Absolutely. No, you did a great time. Great, great job. And uh, I noticed you tossed me under the bus. I was like writing notes down and I went, what? Oh, God, she's going to want me to jump in that cold water. No, I, <laughs> I tossed you under the boat. So, <laughs> that that's true that's true and i don't know if any of you on the call are longtime travel agents but she snuck a photo of someone in there that has been 
had oh. been in the industry for years and years and years and years and is truly missed. So, Michelle, yeah. if you don't think I noticed that, you I, don't know me well. I know, good for you. Yes, we definitely miss Tanya. So, um, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. This, I mean, the great thing about Alaska, and then you guys will see this when we you're up in Anchorage, um, Alaska is a very small but yet very big state, and all of us in the travel industry um, have been friends for a very long time, and so it really is like traveling with family. And um, so, you know, I'm, we're we're very excited to have you all uh, to Anchorage in September. And for any of you who can join us uh, afterwards, um, all the better. We'll have a great time. Absolutely. And um, Michelle was going to put a video in, but I actually asked her to take the video out. And the reason for that is when you're on such as go to webinar, go to meeting, it has to go up to the server and then down to the server and he has a huge lag, and which is too bad. Um, but if anybody great wants, video. I, yeah. we have great videos on our website. I was going to say, go to their website, or if you know me, most of you do, and I, you know, I probably didn't introduce myself. I usually forget. People go, <clears throat> who are you? Um, anyway, if you do know me and know my email, feel free to email me. I did a slideshow, uh, which I think Michelle has had to a pretty fair representation yes. oh, of. Yeah. Um, and they're not your stock photos, you know, there's no professional photographer. It was called Me, Myself, and I, uh, who took mm -hmm. it on a, a fam a couple years ago, loved it. And what Michelle's saying, you know, by the people who are able to go on the post fam, you're going to be with travel agents, so you don't actually have to be careful about what you're saying, because when we travel <laughs> with the real people, sometimes you have to be really careful because you're not supposed to solicit your business, blah, 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 blah. But here, while you're on this fam, uh, Michelle, is it safe to assume you're going to be with us? Yes. Well, you know, well, you know, you, know um, uh, you can talk to her in person, you can talk to me in person, you can talk to other agents, learn how to sell Alaska. Because as she mentioned, it's a different type of sale. Then when you've got somebody who wants an inexpensive cabin and lots of casinos on the ships and jewelry on the ships, and they make their money that way, so don't be misled by the open rate um, on the larger ships. Uh, the price that you get with Alaskan Dream Cruise is pretty much it because it includes the excursions as opposed to $125 to $200 per person for every event. Uh, there's no subliminal upsell, which is what I, it took me two days to be on the ship, Michelle, to realize, oh, my God, there's no one in the background going, hi, would you like to buy this foo, foo drink? Hi, would you like to have your picture taken? You can buy it over here. Hi, would you like to go to your casino? And the whole energy of people on one of your small ships is completely different because there's no pressure to upsell. And yeah. you may have mentioned that, but I may yeah. have missed it. Yeah, no, there, it's uh, everything is included. I mean, um, I, I mean, I can say everything. If if you want to have a cocktail, you know, gin and tonic, which is my drink of choice, before dinner, again, um, that would be on your ship. If you want to have a glass of wine with dinner, we include that. And there's no need to buy excursions. And you know, sometimes people um, will say, well, you know, where, when can we go shopping? <laughs> like some people, there's no doubt people enjoy shopping. But again, it's just not a focus of our cruise, so you're not gonna you're not gonna be exiting through the gift shop. Exactly. I was surprised when you said you even had a gift shop. Do you guys even sell well, T-shirts? It's not a shop. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a shop. It, it is a bookcase, um, and and some sometimes it's half of a bookcase. So but anyway, there you go. I would, there you go. I would say that for people who um, aren't able <clears> to. Join us on the NAXA FAM. Um, I still have some space available at FAM rates for 2017. For 2018, I probably won't know FAM rates until March, but I will encourage our travel company to get involved with us and help us get 
Now, so, do you now? Now you're chopping up. So hold, stop moving wherever you're moving because you're chopping up. Um, there were a couple of the questions from the background, uh, which I actually like get back on target. Sorry, uh, you know how I am, squirrel. Um, so. <laughs> Um, some of the questions are, uh, do you have brochures, do you have catalogs, how do we get information to learn more about your product? Yes, uh, we have our 2017 brochures for 2018. Our 2018 brochures are going to print next week, so I will have them uh, in San Diego with me. I will have them uh, in um, we're more than happy to mail you brochures as well. Um, my email address, I, I think, is it in uh, sent out, Maureen? Uh, you know, if it's not in there, um, it can magically be added to the post uh, webinar message. I'll make, make a note. I'll make a note. Add Michelle. Do you want yeah. her? Per, do you want your personal cell number? How about your home number? You want that too? No, just your email. Okay. My date of birth and my social security number. No problem. Um, there you yeah, go. You can, you can get you can get information about 2018 dates and rates on um, online right now at AlaskanDreamCruises.com. You can also submit a request for brochures. Uh, online as well, um, and you know, I send out um, you know, industry newsletters, uh, you know, quarterly mostly, sometimes uh, monthly, depending on on what specials we have. But if you want to be added to um, our distribution list, we'd love to add you. Um, but um, just contact us, and we'll send you some brochures. But the website is pretty good. Um, you know, with now, do interest. you have a – then this has become one of those things, and I'm not saying this to add more uh, work to you because, you know, you are kind of busy. Um, do Does Alaskan Dream Cruise have a certification program or a training program? Um, experience is totally awesome. Talking to someone like me, which, by the way, I will throw myself under the boat if anybody wants to talk about the product. I think Michelle would say I'm pretty qualified to sell the product. Um, uh, I would be happy to help. What was that? Sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, to answer your question, we don't have um, an agent certification yet. That is something... We just redid our website about six months ago, and so we are um, putting a, a portal, like a, an agent back-end portal, where we can develop a, a certification program, which um, you know will allow you to up your commission or get bonus, um, you know, um, you know, offers. Um, we just haven't got that far yet. Again, we're a super small company, and everyone is busy. I'm not the only one who's busy, but. Uh, committed to getting you guys what you need so uh, like Lorraine said uh, feel free to contact me with uh, any questions or I'm always happy to do more training or even just talk to you about Alaska in general as a concept because I'm fortunate enough to have been a lot of places perfect perfect staff's awesome I have dealt with the staff uh, they're really cool uh, I I have some clients that are celebrating their 50th, 50th wedding anniversary. Oh my God, I can't imagine being with somebody that long. I think it's totally awesome. So I made arrangements to have a special gift basket uh, made. And what made it so easy, it's going to be handmade by somebody who actually works there, not ordered through giftbaskets.com. Uh, and I chose to have that portion of the money that would be for the cost to it to be re removed just from my commission. So that way I'm not paying somebody money and then trying to figure it out later. They said, do you want to just take the money out of the commission? And I went, yeah, because to me, this client's totally worth it. I mean, they, they bought a really nice trip and I just want to thank them with something that's local to the area. So that's something for you guys to, to keep under kind of your hat if you're wanting to take care of clients that are, you know, being really, really good clients. You want them to have something special. So 
A uh, couple of questions for you, Michelle, because you're right. We do need to go, and we still have a question uh, that we need to see if people want to uh, win a $25 card. Somebody was asking if you have a group. Do you offer group pricing? Yeah, we do. That's a great question. Um, for groups of 10 or more, not 10 cabins, but 10 people, uh, we offer um, – an, a a 5% discount, and that would be on addition to any existing promotion. So say, for example, right now they're booking a um, party of 10 uh, for June of 2018, then they would be able to book at 2017 prices and receive an additional 5% off. So, uh, and um, yeah, so that's, uh, and you know, I will say, again, because we are a small company, that um, I have been known to maybe go a bit rogue. And, um, you know, if it's, you know, if you have a family of 30 and you need some kind of concession, maybe waive a single supplement because grandma wants her own stateroom, well, you know, then I'm happy to, um, you know, work with you for, um, you know, unique situations where, you, you know, you, you need extra things. I'm, I'm very happy to work with you, but in general, our standard group discount is 5% off 10 passengers booked or more. Excellent. Excellent. Um, second to last question. Uh, do you have a supplier you partner with when you're doing the land portion? This came during the time when you were talking about people yeah. doing land then coming to do you. Yes, and that is another great question and something I don't have in this PowerPoint just because um, uh, just because it, it take it could be its own PowerPoint. But yes, we were a wonderful company called John Hall's Alaska. Um, they are also a family-owned company operated by the family. They have beautiful motor coaches. They travel throughout Alaska. Um, and we will, on our website, you can see the 2017 offering. We're just now working on 2018. And the exciting thing is they've changed. Um, we offer two different um, of their land tours, which are fully escorted uh, group tours of 40 passengers or less. Uh, again, all inclusive, very similar. Like it was really important for me to find a land operator who mirrored the onboard experience. And John Hall Velasquez does a great job of um, doing the same thing on land that we do on our boat. And this year we have over 50 different uh, land cruise combinations that can be offered and that's why it's a little difficult to kind of distill that into three slides but um, yeah it's it's a great partnership and one that we just started um, about six months ago and um, people have been so happy in the summer and we're very happy as well so we can talk you through that perfect uh, last question before we get to the uh drawing. Uh, so uh, the last question is from an agent who is going on the fam. Yay. Uh, Yay. Love one. Yay. Uh, you talked about the, the, the wine with dinner. Uh, and I guess was that you have like a, a bar, a standard bar if people want like drinks. Uh, is that right? Did I get... Yeah. Um, yeah. She, she was asking what about hot chocolate sodas or water? Uh, are they complimentary? Because uh, she didn't say this. I'm saying this. It's her question, but my comment. I'm a person in recovery, so awesome yeah. for the people who get to have the wine. <laughs> yes. But. <laughs> yeah. No, we have um, on all of our vessels, we have like, and, and this is, you know, for a person who should be in recovery for coffee addiction. Um, <laughs> it's, Really, it's dangerous because we have uh, set up all day long a coffee bar that has hot water, um, regular coffee, decaf coffee, hot chocolate, um, apple cider. Um, so that's available all day long, self-serve. Um, we also have at the bar complimentary um, soft drinks, water. Um, people sometimes will fill up water bottles to take to their room at night. Um, so, yes, that's all available at any time. Juices. Um, those are available as well. Wow. You know, I, I can just 
and now that you say that there's going to be uh, coffee all day there, I will tell you right now, Gail will be blowing you kisses because I'll probably yeah. have too much of it. But at least you, at least you're going to have ca- decaf. That's good. That's good. Thank you. I, I yeah. will thank you. Everybody around me will thank you. So. <laughs> you just have to get her to drink the decaf. That's the problem. So. Right. It, right. It's there. You might not choose it. Um, and because we didn't need to wrap up and I apologize like I said my nickname's Squirrel for going down different paths Uh, would you we're going to have a drawing for a $25 gift card so everybody get on your keyboard uh, put in the chat box if you can if you can't I'll keep an eye on the question box Um, Michelle read your question and I will look for the answer because I have to cheat. I had to write the answer down. So I make sure to get it right. Uh, well, it should be pretty easy considering, but um, right. yeah, the question is what is Alaska dream cruises tagline? What, what is our motto? And it should be pretty easy. It's by right there. You can't yes. miss it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is so subtle as a brick. If you look in your upper left-hand corner, you will see it. (laughs) So, uh, Teresa Mullen, you are our winner. You came in just before, whoa, everybody, oh, my God, everybody else did it. (laughs) What? I know. It's subtle as a brick. It's right there. Uh, Teresa, would you do me a favor? Please put your email in the chat box for me, and I will connect you and Michelle uh, within the next few minutes as soon as we get off. So if you don't get an email from me, holler at me. Um, but thank you again, Michelle. Um, uh, you did a fabulous job, and I can't wait to see you in San Diego first, and uh, also uh, in LA and in Alaska, where we're going to yeah. be at the conference and on the FAM. So, yeah. All right. Thank so, you, everybody, for yeah. taking your time to be here. Any closing remarks, Michelle? Um, no, just thank you for your time and um, never hesitate to reach out to me. Never hesitate to harass me because <laughs> I'm so, to harass, so uh, you know, there is no shame in sending 15 emails saying what the heck, but uh, I under, you know, we, we love working with you as travel professionals and we're here to make your life easy or as possible. There you go. Perfect. And what you are experiencing is what you will experience. Oh, my God, those crab legs are awesome. My spouse doesn't like crab, so her loss, anybody's gain who's around us uh, when we're going to be at Orchid Lodge. So. <laughs> no one really goes without, without food, that's for sure. Exactly. Thank you again, Michelle. Thank you, everybody, for being on the call, for uh, watching this recording and selling the product. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.